Thank you, Montreal. This is not going to be a Canadians video. It's just an introduction here. But the Vancouver Canucks have just defeated the Oilers once again, 4-3 in regulation. The Vancouver Canucks penalty killer stepping up big time. Casey DeSmith stepping up big time. And the reason I'm thanking Montreal at the beginning of this video is because, guess what? Tanner Pearson traded to the Habs, one for one for Casey DeSmith. Today, Casey DeSmith puts on an amazing performance. And today, Tanner Pearson for the Canadians, he scores a goal. I know some Canucks fans might not really care about this, but Tanner Pearson against the Chicago Blackhawks playing for the Habs. Sniped one right by and was able to get himself on the board. He celebrated pretty nicely. You could tell that was an emotional moment for him. And everything works out properly because Pearson scored a goal. DeSmith had a fantastic win. The Vancouver Canucks defeat the Oilers 4-3. to And I'm not even going to say defeat the Oilers. The Vancouver Canucks survived the Edmonton Oilers here. Because Edmonton finishes off this game up 41-16 to in the shots on goal category. Vancouver scored four goals on 16 shots. Meanwhile, Casey DeSmith makes 38 saves. A bunch of those are on the penalty kill. And the Vancouver Canucks, they went to the box seven times in this one. Edmonton only had two power play goals. So there you go. That is the response. That is the kicker. That is Edmonton trying to claw back after an embarrassing loss Wednesday night in Vancouver. But they can't beat Casey DeSmith as much as they needed to. And to be honest, there were so many panic moments in this game. A lot of times where the puck was just thrown into the middle, into the slot, into the goal mouth. And Vancouver was trying to swat at it, get it out. The Oilers are swatting towards the goal. Two of Edmonton's goals in this game were scored like that. And there were so many more big scrums in front that watching the game, especially in the third period, especially as the Canucks killed off a five on three, I was like, dude, there's no way Vancouver is going to escape this game with only three goals against. But they did. Because, firstly, Casey DeSmith, absolute boss. The guy was robbing guys left and right, making glove saves on Leon Dreisaitl one-timers. I'm going to admit, the top players in the world, Dreisaitl and McDavid, did not have the best games here today. There were some shots by Dreisaitl that hit the post. There was, of course, that McDavid pick on Elias Pettersson that resulted in a penalty and the turning away of that extended power play opportunity. But at the end of the day, they still got goals. I mean, the first goal, it's Leon Dreisaitl pouncing onto a puck in the first minute of the game. The Oilers throw it to the front of the net. Casey DeSmith makes a few brilliant saves. The Canucks cannot clear it. Tyler Myers can't do anything. And Leon Dreisaitl is there to put it in as Casey DeSmith is down and out. Totally not the Smith's fault. Vancouver could not clear it. That one nothing goal set the tone for the rest of the game, as that throw it in front and put it in the crease type of strategy seemed to be what the Oilers planned to do pretty much for the entire night. Vancouver, though, claws back after that dry sidle goal. They get a power play, and it's Andre Kuzmenko on Vancouver's second shot of the game that makes it 1-1. Aggressive PK by the Edmonton Oilers, but the Canucks cycle it so nicely, it's Pedersen to Hughes, who takes the shot, and it's tipped in by Kuzmenko. This is what I was talking about with my fantasy team. One goal gets so many points because I have Pedersen, Hughes, Miller, and Kuzi all on my team. This goal served me well in fantasy, it served the Vancouver Canucks well in real life, Kuzmenko gets his first on the season, and it's yet another goal assisted by Pedersen and Hughes. The fun doesn't stop there though, as the Vancouver Canucks end off the first period up by one, as it's Brock Besser who takes a long drive from the point, and it's tipped in front by Niels Hoglander. Hoglander honestly had a pretty rough shift at this point in time. He almost gave the puck away during some extended Vancouver pressure. But after the Canucks cycle it around a little bit, it's eventually Myers who gets it back over to Brock. And he takes the long shot 
Hoaglander the tip, 2-1 Vancouver. That's the end of the first period. The second period gets underway, and the Vancouver Canucks go to the PK once again, and here is where Connor McDavid gets his first on the season. It's Noah Juleson, who absolutely fumbles the play. The Canucks have a chance to clear the puck clearly, but Noah Juleson, instead of sending it down, tries to make a breakout pass on the penalty kill that gets intercepted by Leon Dreisaitl, the puck goes to the front of the net again. It's Ian Cole, Miller, and Juleson right there who can't clear it. And guess who scores? It's Connor McDavid. 2-2, just two minutes into the second period. And this was a goal that frustrated the heck out of JT Miller. You saw the guy was pissed off after that. Not necessarily at Juleson, but because the team couldn't clear the puck after the turnover, after the scrum, they couldn't do anything either. Casey DeSmith left hanging out to dry once again, not able to get things going there. But immediately after, the Vancouver Canucks respond, it's Jack Studnika. The play starts out with Warren Fogel coming down the right side and taking a shot. But his shot goes wide and it ricochets back out to centralize where Elias Pedersen and Studnika come in on a 2-on-0. Pedersen just gives the puck to Studnika and Studnika buries it. Five hole on Stuart Skinner. Darnell Nurse loses his point. He's not on that area and he loses the track on Pedersen because Pedersen kind of goes in front of him to make sure that Darnell isn't able to get the puck. So there you go. 3-2 game. The Canucks have the lead once again. Jack Studnika, who had been playing great this entire preseason, gets rewarded with a breakaway goal, and it's his first of the year. The Canucks go to the box after the Oilers clog up the middle of the crease once again, and eventually it's Nugent Hopkins who scores. He gets the puck at the left side point, just walks in and snipes it. This is like halfway through the game, so for the remaining half, there's only one goal scored and it's by Vancouver. This second period, however, was really not a good one for the Canucks, despite the Studnika goal and Pedersen doing their thing, because the Oilers just kept on getting shot after shot after shot. The penalties were killed by Vancouver, but they were getting hemmed into their zone. The Oilers were absolutely cooking. The offensive zone time in this second period, 10 minutes to 5 for Edmonton. Shots on goal, the Oilers had 18 shots in the period with 3 minutes to go. Eventually, it's Ian Cole who goes to the box for roughing, and Dreisaitl goes to the box too, so we have 4v4 with 31 seconds left. The Canucks are not able to convert on the power play. It carries over into the third period, but no biggie, no worries, because Sam Lafferty, recently acquired from the Toronto Maple Leafs, and a guy we had talked about earlier today as being an Oilers trade target, ends up scoring what is inevitably going to be the game-winning goal. Hoaglander digs it free in the Canuck zone. He throws it up to Lafferty in the neutral zone. Lafferty drives to the goal right by Matthias Ekholm and fires it by Skinner. 4-3. That's the game-winning goal with 17 minutes to go here. Vancouver has four goals on 15 shots, and it's pretty bad for Edmonton. The Canucks then have a bunch of penalty kills they have to go through. Phil DiGiuseppe goes over the glass, making it a 5-on-3 for a minute, but this gets killed after McDavid goes to the box for tripping Patterson. Eventually, though, at the end of the game, the Canucks walk away with the dub. 41-16, as we had said, shots on goal for the Oilers, and only 2-for-7 on that man advantage. We had been talking this entire time about how McDavid and Dreisaitl, they're doing their thing, they're good players, and they each score goals in this one. But they just could not get it done in the final frames. Vancouver's bottom six, Vancouver's penalty killing, Vancouver's backup goaltending, they just stood tall. And a lot of these Oilers fans I'm seeing are getting pretty ticked off with the inability to score 5v5 goals, with the lack of urgency out of guys like Evan Bouchard when the game is winding down and he's got the puck at the blue line. He plays such a calm game. People are saying lack of urgency. McDavid, Dreisaitl not able to convert 5v5. What is up with a team that's got so many power play chances but that cannot get one to go. Is this a Vancouver win or just an Edmonton L? You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, but for now I wanted to say once more thank you to the Montreal Canadiens for sending Vancouver Casey DeSmith. I know y'all are pretty happy with Tanner Pearson because that guy has been admittedly pretty slow for the Habs, but he scored a goal today so it's all good. Thoughts in the comment section about the Vancouver Canucks surviving the Oilers. 4-3 in Edmonton. They're up 2-0 on the season. That's crazy. The Oilers are 0-2. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Irish Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>